Recently, I was looking through the architecture competition yearbook and found a winning proposal that I was amazed at. A project located on a remote island on the outskirts of Columbia. Their proposal created a series of small interventions around the island that would regenerate the public space and help recover the marine life surrounding it. But the main thing that I was amazed at with this proposal was all of the drawings and renders of different styles it had. I wanted to know how they created their maquette style images, how somehow all of their drawings kept a similar language, and how they managed to design all of this on a remote island of the Caribbean. And although this yearbook had a section on how we won the competition that explained how they approached the design and created everything, I wanted to learn more. So I decided to search their profiles and see if we could meet up so they can tell me how they did all of this. Hi, Steven. Hi, Steven. We talked for a while and they told me that they'd participated in more than 10 competitions where they had won different kinds of awards and now they had a specific method for winning competitions. They also walked me through how they create the two main visuals for the project and showed me the 3D model of the main visual. After talking with them, I said to myself, I needed to make a video about this. So I'm going to show you a specific three-step method that BMark uses to win competitions, a breakdown of how they created this image in D5 render, and break down how they created this at Cinemetric section. Oh, and by the way, this was all found through this book right here, but more on that later. This proposal is located on an island that only has a community of less than 1,000 people. They have difficulty accessing clean water, electricity, a good education system, and the way they dispose trash is a real big problem. We choose Santa Cruz del Islote because it's such an amazing place. It's the most densely populated island in the entire world. And it's amazing to see how the people live in this place and how it's like a one big family. Since this is such a small space, there's only 7% of public space, and the marine ecological system is being reduced more and more each day. So the team at BMark proposed a tourist loop that created valuable public spaces and served as a means to increment the economy by bringing tourists into the island. A second big part of the proposal was to enhance the coral reef layer surrounding the island and therefore benefiting the marine species, vital for the island's overall well-being. Our proposal suggests a loop that integrates the entire island into a tourist road, connecting spaces with potential for various activities. And one of the things BMark does as soon as they start a new project is define their visual identity, which is one of the first of three keys they use for their method to winning competitions. Their visual identity is usually composed of a color palette, a logo, a name for the project, and a series of key visual elements. For us, creating a brand for each project is essential. Usually we research the location and its population to discover unique characteristics that define shapes, colors, and a conceptual idea about the project's identity. It's a fundamental guide for the project. It serves as the starting point for creating sketches, plans, or even renders. As soon as they have their visual identity, they use this to create the visuals for the entire project, from sections to plans, at cinematics and illustrations. This way, their drawings all look from the same family. The second key for their method of winning competitions is to have access detail, meaning to do much more than what the competition typically requires. So if we look again at the competition yearbook and search through the competitions from different themes, we see that maybe some of them, since they are mainly ideas competitions, only create schematic projects that don't go too much in detail. BMark instead proposes to do the opposite. They ask themselves, how can we exceed the level of detail to a degree that no one expects it. For our projects, we really like using detailed 3D models. And we think that having a good model helped us work all parts of the project. Their proposal had a master plan down to a technical detail of the furniture. This is the kind of level you have to compete with if you want to win a competition. The third key in their method to winning a competition is to create one main visual element that contains the visual narrative of the project. We aim to ensure that one image captures the same for each project, whether it's an illustration, a render, or an important diagram. A main key visual is the ultimate bonus to winning, and for this project, the image was a different image. They didn't want to create a simple render that they knew everyone else was going to do. They wanted to create a maquette style image to show the architectural side of the proposal that a normal image would not give them. We realized that using a maquette style could help highlight our proposal. Compared to a realistic style, 
it saved us a lot of time in rendering and post-production. As soon as I heard this was made in D5 Render, I was amazed. I immediately wanted to see the model in the final images, so they sent me over the model and they had a chance to explain the whole workflow. We've been using D5 Render as it offers a wide range of elements for our projects. They modeled the houses in Revit, then passed all this onto D5 Render, applied a maquette style material to all of this, and imported low poly 3D people from SketchUp to create the images. Just like they said before, the detail is key to win an image like this. Showing a lot of detail was really important. So in the images, you can see the window detail, public space furniture, floor materials, and even the people were playing a game in the scene. We start by exploring the graphic identity. Then we brainstorm ideas collectively and develop them in detailed 3D models. Finally, we select the key project images. This process is crucial. It sets a clear direction for our work. No matter if we win or lose, we know we're delivering a competitive idea. Another important visual in this project was the Xenometric section, where they had to find a way to show a section of the loop they were creating, but in a creative, different kind of way. So they created different cuts through the model and with their visual identity color palette, imported this into Illustrator to make it look impactful and full of detail. This is the before and this is the after. Now, before we continue, let's talk about the book that started this whole conversation, which is the Architecture Competitions Yearbook, edition number five, year 2023. As you can see, it's a book that comes packed with so many competition proposals of the last year, where you can see the presentation board images, and even for the winners, they have a dedicated part where they explain how they won the competition, along with some very valuable tips and tricks to participate in competitions. This specific edition has also some really interesting interviews with Tim Fu on AI in architectural innovation, Cosimo Scotucci on the art of massing studies and how his experience in MVRDV helped him understand form and mass, as well as a breakdown of the winners of the 10 most important competitions of 2023, the honorable mentions and high quality images of each presentation board. If you want to add this yearbook to your library, there will be a link in the description. Also, we will be hosting a giveaway of this book to everyone who comments in this video, so read the description for more details. The three-step method for BMARC is to create a visual identity, to create one key visual, and to always exceed themselves in detail. Now, I can't believe I got the chance to talk to the creators of this project and they walked me through how they created this. I also got the opportunity to check out some of their other projects and let me tell you that they're so good, you should definitely go and check them out. Studying competitions and competition winners is something I really enjoy and I would really like to do more of. Having the opportunity to break down a project and trying to understand why the jury chose that as a first place, I think is a very fun exercise as an architect. If you would like to see more competition breakdowns, let me know in the comments below. Also, what do you think of designing a project in this location? Would you be up for the task? Let's continue this conversation in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.